It's probably not too good to start a video like this at this place, but um, yeah, welcome to a new video here on Noel's Day. Um, I'm in Czechia, to be specific, in Terezin, and as far as I know, it's the or used to be the biggest Czech concentration camp, um, which obviously is a very sad thing itself. So it's not going to be a happy video, not going to be upbeat music and stuff like that. It's more going to be, you know, thoughtful and... In one of my last videos I talked about history, uh, specifically back then about the Holocaust history. And I said one thing which was, history shouldn't be forgotten. And this is not a video to make light of the things that happened. I mean, horrible things happened, as you all know. But uh, we shouldn't forget that history. So join me today on this trip to the Ghetto Museum, to um, all those other places we have here in Terezin. So I got up really early. I got up around probably six and then I took a bus at seven and now it's uh, let me check uh, it's 8 40 in the morning and there's like literally no one uh, I looked online and it said it opens at 8 the thing that I'm going to first but I don't think that it's open yet because there is like no one here just now I saw a bus of uh, students arriving or passing me, let's say. So I think it's gonna be some people, especially students and I hope some tourists like me. But yeah, if I'm turning around now, you can see the, like a, a graveyard already. Um, each time I see something like this, it like shivers me. So, uh, yeah, let's have a look at it and see what it is. You know, it's, it's so sad seeing all the dates on these graveyards being 1945. Obviously in the very end of the war. And also very sad that I see even like Swiss names, German names, stuff that I, names that I know, um, which is even more, it makes me even more thoughtful when it's like, and now it's like not names anymore, now it's like numbers, which is even sadder. Um, Graveyards are a really weird place. I have to have to admit, there it's a really weird place. Like everywhere, no matter if it's a Jewish graveyard or a Christian graveyard, they're all concerning or upsetting in its own way. You know. So I think up here we have a big cross for not sure if um, if there is a difference between the sides on those on this graveyard. If on one side it's like maybe Christians who died, or not sure why this uh, why this cross is here, and on that side over there is the. Jewish uh, star. But yeah, let's uh, let's have a closer look. It's still numbers. This is so upsetting because you have no clue like who they were, what their names were, when they were born, or when they died. It's just a number. And on some of them there are some like stones on top of the 
graveyard stones and I'm not entirely sure what that means or like if someone if someone just did that deed and went everywhere to put stones on every graveyard very concerning let's head up here here to the right of me you can see these uh, let's say city walls and I'm gonna show you a picture of how that looks on a map you can clearly see that it's a it's a star also Terracine like the city itself looks like this so let's see now if I if I need to get a ticket here not entirely sure how how it works so the combined entrance for an adult was 220 Czech crowns I'm gonna put on the screen how much that is in uh, euros and uh, US dollars so I entered here at like 10 to 9 in the morning and it's like completely empty <laughs> I'm, I'm like the first person around I guess and a guy just came out and uh, told me that there is a tour included and so I'm gonna wait for that tour it will probably start around like in five minutes at around nine so I'm gonna see how much I will talk during this tour um, but yeah it looks like completely empty can't believe I'm the first one so here a very interesting a very interesting fact in here in this office, this was the office of the commander who was leading the whole thing here in Terezin. And he wanted Terezin to be like Auschwitz. Um, but the rest of the Nazis didn't really want that. And so he. He wanted to have gas chambers here in Terezin, but other higher up uh, Nazi people didn't want that. And then he kind of did his own thing and he was a big fan of the saying uh, work is like working is freedom, which is this thing up here. And you might know this from, from Auschwitz. And he wanted to have it so bad. He he wanted to be like Auschwitz completely.
can't believe that 100 people were showering here at the same time through these uh, tubes. The first 200 maybe women always still had warm water but the rest had cold water only and Jewish people had no water at all. So what you see here is the newest part of Terezin, the, um, this part of the build was used um, or was built by the Germans during the Second World War and in these chambers that I'm showing you now here you have candles and then here you have like a chamber. During the war, it was a place for political prisoners. And then after the war, this became a prison for Germans who lived, worked, or had some um, connection to Germany. And so sometimes after the war, even though you had a Czech passport and been living in Czechia for a long time, maybe your family was German and so you came in here into a cell like this. Just five minutes ago there were so many people here and <laughs> now I'm the only one again. But I can see another tour coming. So you saw all these rooms that I showed you before. I was with a guide who told me all about these places and now I'm just looking around by myself. This looks like another sleeping room but looks a bit more um, let's say spacious than the ones I showed you before. It even has tables, um, which the other ones before didn't have. Imagine living in a place like this, not just for a few days, but for months and months, and you don't get a lot of food.
and you have to sleep here. There used to be mattresses, but only in the beginning of the war, and then they took those mattresses out. Um, my guy told me that in a sink like this, someone put a tiny bit of water, and then like 100 people who were living here had to wash themselves with the same water, like every one of them. Every single one had to wash themselves with this water, and like shave and everything, crazy. I think one thing we shouldn't forget, and I'm gonna say it again, history shouldn't be forgotten. Um, and I repeat, history shouldn't be forgotten. Like, as long as possible. Uh, so in a room like this, how many people do you think were living in here? Think about this place, full with people. In the beginning of the war, there were maybe mattresses here, but they took them out because it's it was too much work and you had to clean them, so the people just were just sleeping on the floor or on this wood. How many do you think it was? How many people? Write down in the comments how many people you think were sleeping here. Crazy to think. Just living here, sleeping here on this wood each and every night. And I'm gonna give you a little hint. It's a, it's a high number. When I heard it, I was like, whoa. Then over here, again, we have the sinks. <laughs> um, pretty standard sinks, but I'm not sure if there was any water. And then here are the toilets. I have to agree they look pretty modern. So did you post your comment down below? How many people do you think were in here? I will tell you now, it was 600. 600 people were living in here, were sleeping here each and every night, more or less around 600, which is crazy, right? <sighs> crazy. Just when I wanted to say that it's, thank God, not too many people here. I, uh, <laughs> I met like a huge group of people and so many classes, but I think it's alright. I expected there to be more people here, um, but I'm obviously happy that it's not too many. Now we're uh, going into the museum. This behind me is the barracks of the Germans back here in Terezin. Um, so they were sleeping in here, living, kind of living in here, spending their free time. So we're gonna have a look at it. Um, gonna have to wear a mask, and uh, let's see how it is.
Now I'm on the hunt to find something to eat. Uh, I hope there is a little supermarket or something like this so I can go shopping at a supermarket, at a Czech supermarket and I don't know, have like a sandwich or some little snack would be fine already. So this out here that you see are the city walls of the bigger part of Terezin. Uh, it was built by the Austrian Hungarians before the First World War and it was built like a like a fortress basically. Uh, this one basically is like a big fortress and the other one we saw before is called Small Fortress. And oh nice, nice uh, architecture here. It looks old <laughs> and it was then used by various different people like the Germans during World War II and after World War II it was used by, by the Czechs to imprison Germans for example. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go find something to eat. There are so many things to see here in uh, Terezin. I just went to the Magdeburg barracks and there are so many things to read. It's so much to do. Y you could probably be busy for like a week here uh, and you wouldn't be able to read everything that you, that you want to read. I have to hurry up a little bit. My uh, bus is gonna leave in like an hour or so. So most of the visitors that I saw until now were young kids, I would say probably more or less around 16 years old or maybe a bit under that, like 14, 15. And most of them were Czech or German. I've also heard some Swiss around here. I was surprised to hear Swiss German. I was like, didn't expect that one here. But as you can see behind me on this whole parking lot, it's like a huge parking lot. There are like only three buses and a few little cars. I don't think there are too many um, too many people here to, to be honest visiting here. Uh, there are a few rules here. I'm going to the cemetery now and the two like two graveyards and it says here uh, please observe the visitor regulations. Okay that's what I'm doing right now. Be watchful of what is going on around you. Do not bring dangerous objects. Keep an eye on your belongings. Keep your documents close at hand. Do not leave your children unattended. Be considerate to others. Be respectful and be mindful if uh, there are any other instructions. So I'm quite curious to see now how this uh, cemetery looks and also the Soviet graveyard of all the Soviets who, who died here. I would probably say if you're really into history like if you want to dive deep and um, be able to read a lot of the text that that they're showing, you should probably stay here for a night and like have two full days here. Uh, if you start early and if you keep going until the evening, you can probably see most and like read a lot of the texts within two days. Um, for the people who are interested in history or just want to see what it was like here and what this all looks like, probably one day is enough for you. I think for me one day is uh, pre pretty optimal. You know, I'm, I'm here alone and I can do and read whatever I want to read and uh, walk wherever I want to walk. We're getting closer now to this uh, cemetery. <laughs> or to the graveyard to to be honest the graveyard is coming closer so when walking right up to this uh, monument let's let's call it uh, you can see this yellow building right next to it this is the cemetery or it used to be uh, the Jewish cemetery uh, he, this one here is the Jewish uh, graveyard and 
they were not like single graveyards. Uh, for people were buried in groups at first, like in huge groups, and then and then they were extra extracted again from the from the earth, and um, they were cremated, and then just their ash was was put into here, which is really interesting because. As a Jewish person, or let's say the Jews in general, they don't burn their dead. Like that's not something that they do. Not like the Christians. Many Christians do that. Um, like for example, in in my family and the most families that I know of. But Jews don't really do that because it's it's not what they believe in. Let's say, and but they. Here in Terezin, they had to start doing that because uh, there were so many uh, dead Jews that, um, well, the diseases were spreading and you really had to burn the dead so not more diseases would get spread. Uh, which is which is a horrifying thought if you if you think about it. Um, I'm now walking towards uh, the Jewish monument here. Um, again, as I stated in the very early part of this video, walking on, like walking next to graveyards is making me feel weird and it's no different now I think it's a bit less bad right now because there are no names and no like birth and uh, like birthdays and like days when the people died and, and I think seeing names on gravestones just makes it very very uh, scary I would say uh, also here aren't too many people. Um, we're gonna keep on walking over here. I see some dark gravestones. Um, not entirely sure. They look a bit like laptops from here. <laughs> I'm not sure if I... It's probably too far away but it it looks like dark inner square and then outside like a gray uh, outside gray so kind of looks like a turned off um, laptop now here we have so this was something about the first world war 14 to 18 uh, it looks like it's in uh, Cyrillic so probably maybe a Russian monument for the first world war maybe something like this most likely that's what it looks like at least I'm very curious for, to see those uh, to see those grave stones over here. Let's quickly walk over. Oh yeah now it's now I can see what it is. It's it's literally gravestones with like family gravestones with uh, names and like where people were born and where they died and so on. Which again makes this very a very scary place, to be honest. Let's continue to the to the Russian monument over there, or the Russian graveyard. And as you can see here, it's like not one, two of those gravestones. It's like a whole bunch, and it's men and women. Most of them were born like 18, like late 18 something. 
and there are also there are also kids like this this kid here got only like three years old but others were born 1854 or 1851 which is so long ago which is crazy um, if you think about it I mean if, if you lived from 1851 until 1942 that's that's a long life right I can already see the hammer and sickle over there for the Russian monument we're gonna go a bit closer in a in a second so we're going down this pathway it says here you can see here a, a date 1945 and over here a name I guess and the same here and on all the sides so I guess all those all those died in 1945 I guess and now we're getting closer to the hammer and sickle Here you go, now you can properly see it. Of course, Soviet already. And that's why they, there is the hammer, that's why there's the hammer and sickle. And uh, it's crazy that in one city like this, there was so much pain. And it was not just pain of one like let's say one race but it was pain from so many different nations it was pain from Gavrilo Princip um, who killed the heir of the throne um, Franz Ferdinand and started World War I it was pain for um, for the Jewish people for other political people who were captured by by the Germans or by many others and it was for the Soviet people who came here and basically freed all the all the um, people who were living here all the Jews and so on but still still quite some uh, Soviet people died as you can see here and I'm sure there were more I'm a hundred percent sure and but also the, the Germans who, who came here after the war because they, even though they might not have done much it's always hard to say, even though they may have not done much they still had to come here and, and live here in this, in this ghetto you would have to say just because it was, because the Germans used it as a ghetto before Let's, let's see if we can uh, get inside the cemetery.
Oh, let me take off my mask. Oh. Every like 20, 30 minutes, maybe even less, there is a whole class of young people coming in. It just happened now as well. And then usually the place is packed. I didn't even have space to walk out properly. <laughs> Which is a ridiculous problem that I'm talking about when I'm thinking about how crazy or what what crazy crazy what crazy things this place has seen. And now I'm about to I'm about to leave uh, the graveyard and uh, crematorium, uh, the <laughs> cemetery. It's called. This whole experience that I'm having here is very emotional. I would say. Uh, I usually really like to watch documentaries about topics like these, about the. Second World War and, and um, not because I find it cool but it's just very interesting to see how things were not so long ago because if you think about it now it's like 2021 let's take one year away let's say it's 2020 and let's say 90, 1940 or something so 60, 70, 80 years, I mean 80 years, even even a bit less, like less than 80 years, this is ago. It's like one lifetime, like of a normal person I would say. It's not so long ago, right? And to think about what horrible things people have done, just because yeah, and you know, you can't just blame one person, like that's the wrong thing to do. I've seen many people uh, blame, yeah, it's Adolf, he did everything, it was like only him. It was so many more people, it was a whole machinery. <laughs> and it all it only happened because they felt like it was the right thing to do. They didn't go ahead and, and say like, okay, we're gonna do all these horrible things and that's our plan already in the beginning. You know, first the, uh, the political party that Adolf was in uh, is called NSDAP, like a working party. And it all started very usual, like a normal party, like, no big deal, but then slowly and slowly it got more nationalistic, I would say, is the right word, and more and more, I would say bad things happened. I mean, we, we don't have to, we, we don't have to think that humans are magical, are this magical species who don't do harm to anyone. I just, we have to stop thinking like that because humans are terrible, have been terrible always. It doesn't make right like bad things that have happened. Like I'm not saying that, obviously bad things are still bad things. But we have to take care of the people around us. And what I find personally very important is division. Like, there shouldn't be a division between people. Let's look back to World War II. And before World War even started, Jews were already like the bad people. Like the, the Germans kind of split Jews from everyone else. And that I just find wrong. And I'm gonna say it again, like I said it in the beginning of the video and somewhere in the middle, like, history shouldn't be forgotten. Like, ideally, like, never. But that's not gonna happen because humans are not perfect. But history shouldn't be 
forgotten and that counts for everything that happened. Obviously you can't remember everything, but for anyone out there who might think, oh, history is, is not so important or history is not interesting, I, I swear to you in every in everything you read about history, in every story, in every book you read about history, there are things you can learn from that. Because mistakes are always made. When humans are there, mistakes are always being made. And so you can always learn something from history. And one last time, history shouldn't be forgotten. <laughs>